Okay, it's been a while, but never fear, there is still plenty to learn. In this video we're going to have a look at lists, um, and specifically how you can use lists to group data of a similar type, how you can access that data once it's been stored, uh, and how you can write loops uh, to iterate through those lists. Okay, so um, you may have found that when you've been creating programs, you have uh, a number of variables. Um, for instance, I might have um, a person's name. I might have uh, someone's name, say, a person uh, one name, for instance, equals Alice. Uh, and I might have a person two name uh, equals Bob. Um, I might even have person uh, three name, person three name equals uh, Charlie, for instance. Okay, and uh, that's all well and good, um, and th th that might be fine for what you need to do. However, it might also be the case that you need to group this data together because there might be more people than you initially thought. Okay, if I'm keeping track of all of the people that have arrived for a party or something like that, cool, Alice is here, Bob is here, Charlie's here. Am I expecting any more? Well, I did say that people could bring their friends, so you know, maybe more people will turn up. Um, and so if you don't know how many people are actually going to show up, you don't know how many variables you're going to need for all of these different people, uh, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how can, I, how can I add some extra stuff to that? How can I sort out all of these, uh, these different things? How can I group this information together? A, so that I don't have tons of different variable names, and B, so that I can um, add things to it dynamically and, and reduce the number of sides, and also so that I can perform tasks like counting the number of people that are here. Okay, and one of the ways that we can do this is using a data structure known as a list. If you've done any programming in other languages, lists are very similar to arrays. Um, if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how you can create a list. So I'm just going to reduce the font size here a little bit. Um, so we've got person one name equals Alice, person two name equals Bob, person three name equals Charlie. I am going to create a single variable which is going to hold all of that information. So I can just say names, names equals, and the way that it works is I use square brackets. Okay, anything that's inside the square brackets is part of this data structure, and you can separate the individual items within the data structure uh, using commas. So for instance, uh, Alice is uh, Alice, uh, and we've got uh, Bob, Bob, uh, that's Bock, I can't spell, there we go, Bob, and uh, finally we've got Charlie. Okay, so here's our three names. You can see already all of that data is grouped together and we have access to all of this information. Now, if I wanted to output that information, the way that I would output my standard uh, person one name, person two name, person three name, I could do a uh, print statement. Uh, so I could say print person one name. I could say uh, print uh, print uh, person two name, or I could say print uh, person three name. Okay. Um, let's just see what happens when we print out names as well. So print names, uh, there we go. If I run that code now, um, you can see it's printed out Alice, it's printed out Bob, it's printed out Charlie. One output for each of those lines there. That should be nothing new to you. Um, but then it's printed out the whole of the data structure um, exactly as we typed it in. The order is exactly the same. Uh, every item in there is still a string. It's all separated by commas and it is enclosed with these square brackets. Okay, uh, Single variable, um, all grouped together. And you might be thinking, well, okay, yeah, that's brilliant. It, it reduces the number of variables that I'm going to need, but, you know, I can print out each person's name on a separate line here. I can't do that with your magical data structure. Well, 
Oh, ye of little faith, you can do that. You can access individual items within a list by specifying uh, the index of the item. Um, now, every item that you add to a list is assigned a value, a numeric value called the index, starting from zero and going up by one each time. So Alice's index in this example is zero. Bob's index is 1, Charlie's index is 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, And the way that I can access individual items within that list is by including the index in a set of square brackets after the variable name. So I can print out Alice, Bob and Charlie in a similar way to having a different name printed on each line like this simply by specifying the index of the item that I want to print out. So for example print uh, names because names is the list that I'm accessing and then if I print out index 0 that should print out Alice. All right? If I now print names um, 1 it should print out Bob and if I print names um, to it should print Charlie okay so if I run that code now there we go we've got Alice Bob Charlie that's from these three lines here then we've got the whole of the list being printed out that's from our print names and then you can see we've got Alice Bob and Charlie there okay it simplifies things an awful lot okay you can order things as well you can sort the, uh, the list into a specific order and then you can refer to each of the individual items. There's an awful lot of things that you can do by grouping together data in lists. Okay, General rule of thumb, if you've got an awful lot of information or even just multiple data objects which are, are normally stored as separate variables but they relate to the same thing and they are just like variants on the same piece of data, consider sticking them all in a list. Okay, so have a play around with those uh, with those lists and accessing the items individually. Okay, and then when you're ready, we can move on to the next thing, which is adding items to a list that already exists. Okay, I'm just going to clean this up a little bit, so I'm going to delete everything uh, except for the original list. Okay, so here's my names list. If I print that out, um, we get. Um, we get what you'd expect. The whole list is printed out there. Okay. So let's say someone else turns up to my party and I need to um, add their name to the list. Well, there's an easy way of doing it. If I say names, because names is the name of the list that we're adding something to, and then dot append, what that does, append means add something onto the end. Okay, so we're adding whatever goes in our parentheses here, we are adding that onto the end of this list. So let's say um, Delilah, uh, Delilah has just turned up. Okay, if I now print the, um, the, the names out there, I run the code and you can see it's printed out Alice, Bob and Charlie and then we've appended the name Delilah to the end of the list and you can see there she is added to the end of the list. Okay, so I've got a challenge for you now. I want you to write some code which is going to add uh, two more people to the end of the list. So we've, we've got Delilah on the end of the list. I want you to append these two people. I want you to append uh, Elijah, okay, Elijah is going to be added onto uh, the end of it, um, and uh, Freddy, okay, so we're adding Elijah and Freddy onto the end of the list, okay, so pause the video, write the code that's going to add those two onto the end of the list, and we'll see how you get on. Okay, so you've probably done that now. You've unpaused the video and you want to see whether your code is correct. So you should have something that looks like this. Names uh, dot append Elijah. Uh, and then another line, names dot append. Um, what was it? Freddy. Okay, so we've got Delilah, Elijah and Freddy. When we print out the names, 
there it all is. Now you might have been tempted to skip one of these lines and write some code that looks like this. Instead of names.append Elijah, you might have written uh, names.append Elijah uh, and then um, Freddy on the end there. If you'd have done that, you would have got an error message. Okay, you can see append takes exactly one argument. And so now you're thinking, ah, wait a minute, I, I know what to do. Let's just put this in square brackets. Okay, we've got a separate list, Elijah and Freddy. And we're adding that onto the end of this list. What could possibly go wrong, right? Well, let's just see what could go wrong. To start off with, it looks like it's been added properly. But what do you notice about this list here compared to uh, what it should look like? What's wrong with that list? Pause the video if you need to, have a think about it, and then either say out loud or say in your mind what is wrong with this. The answer is, it has added Elijah and Freddy onto the end of it, but it's also added the square brackets. It's added a single item to the end, but that single item consists of a list, which is not what we want. Because at the moment, Alice is item 0, Bob is item 1, Charlie is item 2, Delilah is item 3, and this whole thing, Elijah and Freddy, is item 4. I can prove that to you. If I say print names 4, it won't just print Elijah, it will print a list containing Elijah and Freddy. Okay, there we go. Which is not what we want. But, do not despair, because there is a quick way of adding multiple items to the list without having to write append this item, now append this item, now append this item. If you've got a whole list of them like this, I'll tell you what, let's add an, another one in fact. Let's uh, Elijah, Freddy and um, Greg. Let's make sure there's some quote marks in there. Okay, um, instead of using append, I am going to use extend. Okay, the way extend works, it's very similar to append, but instead of adding a single item, it adds each item in a list that you pass it to the end of the um, to the end of the list. Okay, so now when I run this, we can see it's added all of those items. If I call uh, print uh, names. Um, for again, instead of just saying Elijah, Freddy, it should just say Elijah. Okay, cool. So that is how you add single items to existing lists. That's how you add multiple items to existing lists using a single line. So, so far we have covered creating lists and adding items to the end of the list. It's worth pointing out as well that you can create an, a list with nothing in it. Okay, you can create an empty list. Okay, so in theory what I could do if I didn't know who was at the party, I could say, right, I know that some people are coming to the party, I don't know who it's going to be, I'm going to start off with names here and I could say, um, while true, um, uh, names dot append input uh, name. Okay, and then print names. Right. So this is going to loop forever, which is generally bad news. But don't worry about it. Uh, when I run it, what should happen is it will ask me for a name. I will type in that name and it will add it to the end of my names list and then print it out. And we should see this names list building up gradually as we go along. So first of all, it's asked me for the name. Let's say uh, John is the first person to arrive. You can see our names list is now John. The next person to arrive is Henry. Okay, we can see we've got John, we've got Henry. They've both been added to the list dynamically. I haven't set that up ahead of time. I've started off with an empty list and I'm adding it on each time. Who is next to turn up? Uh, Charlotte. Uh, Char How do you spell Charlotte? C-H-A-R-L-O-T-E. Apologies to any Charlotte's watching. Um, John, Henry, Charlotte. Okay, do you see how this is working? Um, we can use a 
uh, a loop to continually add things until we're done. Now I could have something in here uh, which says um, uh, I don't know, uh, if name Oh, I was going to put something in there where it checks to see if you've typed in the word quit or not. Uh, I'd have to change it a couple of lines ago. But there is a, um, a potential challenge for you. Um, edit the, the program so instead of infinitely looping, uh, it will continually add names that you type in until you type in the word quit, uh, at which point it does not add the name to the list and it just quits out. Okay, so we have so far looked at how to create a list, how to add individual items to a list, um, and how to add multiple items to a list, and how that might be useful. Okay, we've looked at accessing individual items from a list. Okay, that's very useful if you have, for instance, um, a list which is um, uh, your memory store, if you like, and each index in there would be an address. So if you're building something like a von Neumann architecture simulator to simulate the uh, fetch decode execute cycle, and you have a, um, uh, a, a list called memory store or something like that, uh, in here there might be various commands. Um, um, like that, for instance, if I wanted to access one of those items of memory, I could just feed it the address. Okay? Now then, there are some other things that we might need. We might want to search a list. We might want to find out whether an item exists in a list. For instance, if you have a list of valid usernames, okay, um, let's create a username list usernames equals uh, first username is I don't know bingo uh, I put bongo but that'll do whatever uh, the next item is uh, pff, you know, silly username um, it, yasman43 I don't know um, and another one um, let's have uh, yakuti um, XXX. It would help if it was actually in a, uh, in a thing. Maybe this is a Vin Diesel fan. I don't know. Um, and then maybe, I don't know, um, something like um, horse is um, for life spelt wrong. Okay. So here's my list of usernames. Right. Let's say, for instance, I am writing a program which is going to ask a user for their username and if they're not a valid user, I'm going to say, no, you can't use this program. Um, but if they are a valid user, I can say, right, okay, now tell me what your password is. Okay. So one of the ways that we can check whether a username actually exists in this list of usernames is by using the in keyword. Okay. So I am now going to um, uh, create a variable called username, not usernames. Be very careful there. Username equals input. Uh, what is your username? Okay, and then that's going to ask the user what their username is, right? So now we're going to have an if statement. If username in usernames. Okay, okay. So, so if the name that they've typed in is in here, is in this list anywhere, we're going to print out. Uh, valid user. Okay. Otherwise, we are going to print um, invalid and loads of exclamation marks to hammer the point home. Okay. So now, if I run my program, what is your username? If I type in an invalid username, like, I don't know, Jim Bob, uh, Jim Bob uh, 66. Uh, it says invalid because JimBob66 doesn't appear anywhere in this list of usernames. However, if I type in a, a username which does appear in there, like Bongo, for instance, Bongo, it says valid user because Bongo exists in there. Okay? Simple. And that's all well and good if you just want to do an overall check does this value actually exist inside that list anywhere? But chances are you want to be a little bit more specific than that. If it does exist in the usernames, 
maybe we want to pull out what the index of it is. Okay, we can search the list to find out what um, index each of these items is at. Okay, so if we get to this point in our code, we know that the um, username is valid. It exists in here. So what we can do is now print uh, the index uh, of uh, username is and then we need to convert it to a string because it's going to return it as an integer. The way that it works is you say uh, usernames I might have to uh, just modify this a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Uh, usernames dot index and then inside the index you are going to pass the thing that you are searching for. And well the thing that we are searching for is the username. Okay, so we're going to pass username there. Right? If I run my program, what is your username? If I type in uh let's do yasman43, uh, well yasman43 does exist and the index should be what should it be? 1. That's right. If I run the program now, uh oops, didn't mean to do that. Um, what is my username? Yasman43 uh, Valid user. The index of Yasman43 is 1. Okay, It's gone into the list and it has found that item. Now if you try and search for an item that doesn't actually exist okay, I mean let's let's just try this. If I just comment out this code here what is your username? Uh, if I uh, say print in, uh, sorry, uh, usernames dot index and then uh, username in here, username. Okay, so I'm going to deliberately type in a username that doesn't exist here. Bear in mind, it's not going to run my previous validation script here. Uh, when I run it, what is your username? Well, let's type in anything that doesn't exist. There we go. That's, there's that. Okay, you get an error message. If you try and find the index of something that doesn't exist in a list, you get this error message. Value error. Blah, 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 is not in the list. So you've got to make sure that if you ever do use the index command, you use an uh, if thing is in the, um, uh, the list beforehand. Okay, now you don't have to feed it a variable. Okay, um, you could for instance, um, don't know why caps lock is suddenly on. Uh, you could, for instance, print um, names, usernames, uh, dot index. I mean, I already know that bongo is in here, so if I type in bongo, okay, bongo, if it's something that you know is in there, you can find out what the index is. It's rare that you would do that, though, uh, because generally speaking, if you're searching something, um, if you know it's already in there, why are you searching for it, right? Um, but hey ho, if I run that now, you can see uh, it doesn't matter what I type in for my username, it's going to return zero because it's literally just searching for bongo. Okay, so to search a list, you have to use the index command, but you cannot use the index command unless the item that you're searching for is actually in the list, otherwise, you will get an error. Okay. So, we've looked at creating lists, we've looked at accessing individual items within a list, we've looked at adding items to the end of a list, we've looked at adding multiple items uh, to the end of a list, we've looked at searching through a list to find uh, an item, uh, we've looked at checking to see whether things exist in a list. Um, there's only one more thing really that I need to explain. now. When I say there's only one more thing to explain, um, there is an awful lot more that you can do with lists than what is just in this video. Okay, and uh, later on I will create a video which is sort of like advanced list manipulation. But for now, these are all the things that you really need to be getting along with. Okay, uh, so the, there's two more things that I want to show you. First of all, um, how to loop through a list. Uh, well, three more things then. How to loop through a list. Um, how to um, create a list within a list, 
and why that might be useful. Um, and finally, there's a command which is, it's not a list command, it's a string command, but it will generate a list from um, a text input and it could be very useful uh, in certain situations. So we'll have a look at that. Okay, so first of all, looping through a list. Okay, let's say I'm going to keep my usernames. I want to go through this list and I want to print out every single item in there. One thing that I could do is there is this command called len, right? What len does is it tells you the length of a list, right? If I do print len um, usernames, it's going to count how many items are in usernames, return that value, and then print it out. So it should print out one, two, three, four. Note the length of um, a list the length of a list is not the same as the highest item in it. Okay, so there's four items in the list, but the index of this item is three. Nor, one, two, three. Nor, one, two, three. That's four items. Okay, so when I run the code, four. Okay, so knowing that we can pull out the length of a list using the len keyword, you might be thinking, ah, I know how to write a for loop which is going to start at zero and go all the way through until it's reached the end of the list and it's going to print out a um, an item on each line. Okay. If you know how to do that, pause the video, write the uh, the loop, run it, see if it works, and then come back and have a look. If you're not sure how to do it, if I write you the first line to get you started, then you can pause the video, see if you can um, uh, see if you can finish it off. So I can say for i in range um, uh, len username. Okay, so len usernames is four. So for i in range four means it's gonna i the value of i is gonna start at zero and it's gonna go zero one two three. Because remember, with range, you don't include the upper bound. So hopefully, that will be enough for all of you to now write the contents of this for loop. So pause the video, see if you can write that for loop to print out each item in the usernames list on a separate line. So I trust that you have done that now. Uh, it's very simple. All you have to do is print um, usernames, usernames, and then in the square brackets we are saying i, because every time you go through the loop i is increasing, it starts off at zero. So print usernames i the first time through the loop will be print usernames zero, which will be bongo, it's going to print out bongo. The next time through the loop i becomes one. Well, usernames one is yasman43. Usernames two is yakuti xxx and uh, usernames three is horses for life. If I run this now, you can see there's our output. Okay, now you might be content to carry on at this point and say, oh cool, I know how to do that now, boom. But what if I was to tell you there was actually a better way of doing it? Okay, so although that is perfectly valid, a, a more easily understood way from a readability point of view is to do something like this. Uh, for uh, username in usernames. Okay, let me just explain what's going on here. If we do for something in something, it means go through this list, right? And every item that's in there, for each pass of the loop, assign it to this temporary variable. So the first time we go through this loop, um, username will be assigned the value bongo. The second time we go through the loop, username will be assigned the value yasman43. The third time through, it will be yakuti xxx, and so on and so forth. Okay, and so all we need to do here is print um, username. 
Now I've used the term username here for username in usernames makes sense to me but you can call it anything you want. You could still have for I in usernames. I tend not to do that because I should really be a number and it's used uh, to represent the iteration cycle that you're going through there uh, but you could have for name in usernames, you could have for item in usernames, it doesn't matter. This variable is one that you define and it is temporary, it only exists for the duration of that loop. If I run this program now we should get all the items in the list twice. There we go. Now there might be some situations where you do need to know what the index of the item is. Okay? And you're probably thinking, oh yeah, well, what use is what use is this if I need both of them? So much for readability, huh? Well, what if I was to tell you there is a way that you can have the best of both worlds, and that is using the enumerate function. Okay, so what you can do is uh, for i comma username in enumerate usernames. Okay, let me explain what is going on here. What the enumerate uh, keyword does is it takes this list and not only does it assign the actual item value to this variable that you specify, it also assigns the index of that item to this variable that you specify. Okay, very important. The first variable that you specify will be the index. The second variable that you specify will be the item itself. So you've got the best of both worlds here, uh, and you could do something like um, print um, uh, the index of um, uh, username is. Um, and don't forget, it returns it as a uh, integer, so we're going to have to convert to a string. Um, okay, so now when I when I run my loop, I should get the contents of the loop printing, the contents of the loop printing again, and that, and then afterwards we'll get the index of bongo is zero, the index of yasban43 is one, and so on and so forth. If I run that, you can see there exactly what is going on. Okay, so three different ways there that you can iterate through a list of items. This is really useful if you have a video game, for instance, and you have a number of different sprites on the screen, and you want to check how many of those sprites are colliding with the uh, with the player at any one time. Right? What you can do is go through each of those sprites, and you can say, "Yo, is this first sprite colliding? No. Is that second sprite colliding? No. Is that third sprite colliding? Yes, it is. Okay, cool. We've got a collision." Okay, so you don't have to rewrite code over and over again. You've got all of your sprites grouped together in a list. You can go through that list of items and you can check for those collisions. Okay, so there's one potential um, use for it. Now, I said there was going to be, um, I was going to show you how you can create lists inside lists. Up until now, all the lists that I've shown you have been single dimensional lists. Okay, we've had a, uh, a single item uh, in each place. But there's nothing stopping you from making each item a list. Okay, this is what's called multi dimensional arrays. Now, let's say, for instance, instead of usernames, we have, um, let's call it uh, username uh, password. Okay, or uname p word um, for brevity's sake. So instead of just having a username and a password, each item now is going to become a separate list. Bongo's password is 1234. It's not a very good password. Okay, but notice the way that this is laid out. Each item is, set, is enclosed in its own set of brackets. Now, to make it easier for you guys to read, I am going to do this on multiple lines. You don't have to do it on multiple lines, uh, but I just find it easier to see what's going on here. So, Yasman43's password is going to be, um, I don't know, uh, Happy98, um, maybe. There's an interesting password. Uh, Yakuti's password is going to be... Um, Octo Nettle um, 65. These are highly secure passwords, obviously. Uh, and then finally, uh, Horses for Life, their password is going to be, um, I don't know, A, B, C, D. Okay? Um, 
So notice I opened the whole list with a um, uh, with a square bracket. I closed the whole list with a square bracket. But each individual item in there is a separate list. We've got this list here. Element 0 is bongo. Element 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4. This second list here, element one, 0 is Yasman 43, element 1 is Happy 98, and so on and so forth. Now, here's the thing that might confuse you a little bit. If I print um, len uh, uname uh, password, uname p word, I want you to have a think. What do you think the length of this list is going to be? Okay, pause the video and have a think. Tell me your answer. If you said four, you were correct. Okay, and the reason why it is four is because each of these items, although they do contain two items themselves, each of those items is actually a single item. Okay, I can prove it to you here. If I go uh, for item in uh, uname p word print item. Okay, you can see it prints each of these items on a separate line and each of those items is a list. Now we can still access those items individually and we can access the individual elements of those items individually as well. Okay, so I could, for instance, let's say um, Yasman is logging in and I want to check his username and password. I can pull up his username like this. Okay, if I print. Um, I know that Yasman is uh, item 2 in my uname p word, um, so I can uh, print uname p word, um, sorry, is element 1. So I can print uname p word 1. Well, if I was to print that, I just get the whole of that. But if I want to find out what his password is, within this, this sublist, if you like, the password is also element 1. So if I put uname p word 1 and then also put a 1 in square brackets afterwards, what that means is go to the first element or element 1 in uname p word. Okay, so here's element 0, here's element 1, right? There's our first element. And within that element, go to its element 1. That's what this second 1 means. So element 0 would be Yasman43. Element 1 is Happy98. Okay, so this should just print out Happy98. There it is. Okay, uh, let's say I want to find out Horses for Life's uh, password. Well, let's do it a little bit more special, shall we? Uh, what I want you to do... Um, you might still have the code from before. Write the program so it asks the username to, uh, sorry, ask the user to type in a username. It then searches uname p word for that password and then will print out the um, the password. Okay, so have a think about that. You are going to have to search every single item in the uh, in the list actually this is quite a difficult uh, challenge I hadn't really thought this through um, so maybe you want to work through it with me but I don't know you might want to have a go yourself um, so I can say um, you name equals input you uh, name uh, input what is your name Okay. Now the thing is, we want to go through every single item in this list and we want to check element 0 to see if it exists. Okay. So what we can do is, um, we can't really use in here. Or maybe we can. I don't know. Should we try it out? Let's see. Um, if um, you name in you name p word. I don't think this is going to work myself. Um, so just for testing purposes, let's just see. Because I think if I say, is that in there? It's only actually searching each of these individual lists. Um, so let's see if that works. What is your name? Let's type in bongo. It doesn't work. Okay, so what we'd have to do is have a for loop which goes through and maybe uses a boolean flag uh, to check 
whether it is uh, whether it is true or false. Okay, so let's just say um, exists equals false. Okay, uh, we are going to check to see if it exists. So we are going to say um, for item in you name p word. Um, and then we can do our if. Okay, we can say, uh, well, no, we don't want to do it if in. We want to check to see if element zero is the item. We can say if um, item zero equals you name. Uh, we are then going to set uh, exists to true. And we're going to break out of the loop at that point because we found the thing we're looking for. Otherwise, we are then going to. Um, um, actually, no, we don't need to break. Keep it like that because if it's not in there, we're going to keep it as as false. Okay, and then. Then we're going to ask the user uh, for a password, but only if their username exists. Okay, so if exists equals, uh, well, we don't need to say if exists equals true. We could just say if exists. Um, so if the username does exist, we can print out uh, username valid. Username valid, there we go. And uh, we are then going to check to see where the username exists and also where the uh, what the whether the password matches hmm. see this is my this is my on the ball thought process I'm probably going to go back here while we're here we might as well uh, pull out what the uh, what what the index is um, so Let's use that enumerate thing, shall we? For i item in um, enumerate uh, you name p word. Um, so if we found the item, uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna say exists equals true, and then we're gonna set uh, the um, well. Let's call it index. Index equals i. Okay. Uh, and up here. Uh, we'll say uh, index equals none. We're going to set it to nothing. Uh, so if the username is valid, we are then going to ask the user uh, for a password. So we're going to say p word uh, equals uh, input. Uh, what is your password? Okay, um, and then finally we can check to see if this actually. Uh, works okay so we are gonna say if you name P word index 1 okay do we understand where we're getting that from index is whichever thing we found if we found it if we found their username was here then index would be 0 if we found their username was here index would be 3 and that covers this whole thing Okay, so that index tells us which of these lists, and the one is the password element there. Yeah, um, equals p word. We can print um, access granted, else print uh, incorrect. Password. Okay, bit long winded this, but still it gives you an. I mean, there's probably more efficient ways to uh, to do it than that. But based on the skills that I've taught you guys already, um, yeah, there's 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 more there's there's simpler ways of doing it, uh, but they require a more advanced understanding of um, of lists. So don't worry about it at this stage. Hopefully you can follow along with that code. I'd highly recommend pausing the video at this point and just having a read through that code and making sure that it makes sense. Okay. When I run it now, what is your name? Uh, let's uh, type one that we know exists. Let's do uh, Yakuti uh, XXX. And remember, it's case sensitive. We can say the username is valid. Um, what is your password? If I just type in anything, it should say uh, access, uh, sorry, incorrect 
uh, password. Um, if I run it again, and let's do the same thing again, uh, Yakuti uh, XXX, uh, username valid. What is your password? It is Octonettle65. Uh, uh, I spelled that wrong. Octonettle65. And it should say incorrect password what's going on here okay let's try this again I'm gonna copy and paste just to make sure I'm not making any errors okay it might have been case sensitive access granted there we go it works okay so multi-dimensional lists a little bit more tricky to understand but the things you gotta remember is you can access individual items within the uh, list just by specifying uh, the index of the list you're accessing and then the index of the item within that list. Okay, You can have lists within lists within lists um, and yeah, I mean you can have multi-dimensional lists. Uh, they, they go, you can go ridiculously deep with it if you if you need to. For the purposes of uh, GCSE work you shouldn't need to go uh, beyond uh, two dimensions but you know have a play around with it experiment see how it works now there was one final thing that I was going to show you and that is not actually a list command it's a string command but it's used to help generate lists um, and let's say for instance I had a string um, let's call it uh, long no I'll call it sentence okay here's my sentence uh, the sentence is uh, the ink on our fingers lingers longer uh, than the careers of our favorite rap singers. Okay, so it's going over a, over a line, but whatever. Okay, I'll reduce, there we go. So that's that's my sentence there. I want to split this up into individual words. There is a command called split which will do that for you. Okay, so I can create a variable called split sentence. Okay, and if I do split sentence equals sentence dot split, the way that split works, whatever you put into the brackets is the thing that it's using as the divider. So if you had something separated by commas, you could put a comma in there. By default, it uses spaces, right? Just to show you what this looks like, if I now print um, split uh, sentence, okay? When I run that, you can see it has taken the, um, the sentence. It has removed the spaces. The spaces are now gone, right? But each of the individual words are now their own items in a list okay so that's useful if you want to find out what the I don't know the fifth word uh, in uh, the the sentences so I could say uh, print um, split uh, sentence uh, four remember the fifth word will be index four so when I run that it's fingers apparently one two three four five there we go okay other uses for it if for instance you were trying to decode an instruction into opcode and operand for a an exercise where you were simulating the execution of the fetch decode execute cycle in the von Neumann architecture for instance that's something that you could use right this video has now gone on for way longer than I anticipated uh, it's nearly 50 minutes um, now that's not to say that it was uh, not useful stuff but as you can see I've only really scratched the surface of what's possible with lists there are lots and lots of other things that you can do uh, with lists I highly recommend using lists and practicing with lists and trying out the stuff that you have learned in this video um, there will be a later video which looks at what's called list comprehensions uh, which allows you to do some pretty voodoo black magic command line stuff uh, to uh, to iterate through uh, through lists and generate lists on the fly Okay, hopefully this has been helpful. If it has, 
give us a thumbs up and smash that like button um or or maybe just like get on with the work that needs getting on with you know you know what i mean uh, thank you very much for your time everybody